I have a confession to make. Um, all these screencasts that I told you I was using Vim, I've actually been using Emacs. Um, I have an alias set up. I type Vim, you think I'm leading Vim, it's actually Emacs the whole time. I feel kind of bad about it, uh, but I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Um, and in this one I want to talk about relative loan numbers. Um, but really that's part of a larger topic which is vertical movement. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can do vertical movement. I'm going to open a file with enough lines in it to make vertical movement actually interesting. Uh, so I'll just run through some fairly obvious ways to do vertical movement. Um, one is just mashing the J and K key up and down, which is somewhat of a nervous tick that a lot of Vim users have, and I still do it a lot, especially when I'm doing a screencast and I'm talking at the same time. But when I'm not doing a screencast, I try to use uh, other more efficient means of jumping around, the most obvious of which is relative line numbers. So I might know that I want to go down to that host OS line 10 lines below me, and I'll do 10J, and I can jump straight down there. Uh, alternatively, I could use, if I've been there before, I could use the jump list. Um, so just say I know I've been there before. If I hit Control O, I'm going to jump back out of the jump list. And if I keep hitting Control O, I'm going to keep going places where I've been. Um, and if I keep Control I, I'll be going in the opposite direction. Um, for a long time though, even though I've had relative line numbers turned on for literally years, I mostly didn't use them because I wasn't so good at touch typing the number row. It is definitely worth learning how to touch type the number row. You can do it probably in a day. It's just something that feels awkward and uncomfortable and so we probably ignore it, but it really is actually trivially easy. So I recommend that you do it so that you can benefit from relative line numbers. Uh, relative line numbers aren't just about jumping around, but they can also be about operations. So just say I'm in this conditional here and I realize I want to change all three lines at once. I could do change to J and change all three lines at once. So I wasn't jumping there, I was targeting a range for a motion that I wanted to apply. Let's talk about other ways to move around vertically. Um, you might have heard of high, medium, and low. So H, M, and L, all shifted. Those are the mnemonics I use. High is gonna move the cursor to the top, M to the middle, L, low. Uh, another common one is to use curly braces. So curly, left and curly right are actually going to jump between blank lines in a file. So this actually works pretty well. You can just mash, mash this. It's going to jump a variable amount, but given that most code we write is composed of things like functions, this ends up being a pretty good way to jump around the file. And then of course there's Control D, Control U, which would do bigger jumps. Um, and I am not sure whether I've mentioned this already, but Control E and Control Y are good for scrolling. So sometimes you just want to see a little bit that's off the screen without actually moving the cursor. So you can use Control E and Control Y for that situation. Um, and finally, there's search. So just say I, I know that I've seen that host thing somewhere before, I can just start typing host, and there I am using the default slash search. So I want to round out this screencast by showing you a little cute function that I've defined that enables me to cycle the line numbers. You'll see here that I've got relative line numbers at the moment, but you can imagine there are some files where maybe you might want to look at it with absolute line numbers. Like maybe you're looking at a list of test failures, and so you just want to see if it's complaining about line 70, where's line 70, even when you're not on it. So in that case, absolute line numbers are good. Maybe you're editing plain text and you don't want to see any line numbers at all. So effectively with this mapping here, which for me is leader R, where leader is space in my case, I can cycle through these three states. So let me show you how that is defined. In my leader mappings here, I just have leader R bound to this mappings cycle numbering function, which I can, oops, which I can open. Now it's gonna be here, cycle numbering. So you can see in the case here where relative number is defined, it is going to cycle through these four states. This is effectively a state machine. We're gonna get the value of number and relative number and if they're both unset, which is what's happening in this first line, we're going to turn them both on. And when they're both on, this is how you get this state that I currently have where I have both relative line numbers above and below the current line, but I also have the current line number on the line where the cursor is. So if I was to set no number here, you'd see that the, the number where the cursor is is always zero, which is not so useful. But if I do set number, it shows me the current line that I'm on. Uh, so moving on, next state is when, what happens when number is off and relative line number is on. Well, in that case, we're gonna to transition to a state where we turn off the relative line numbers, but we keep the number. Um, 
And you'll notice if I go through all states, there's four possible combinations here. Uh, and when I cycle, I end up going through three states. The reason why there are four states in the state machine is because I want to make sure that if we're ever in one of these states that I'm not particularly interested in visiting, that it will get into that cycle of three straight away. Um, so that is the trick for toggling relative line numbering. Um, I hope you find it useful and tune in again soon while I have more to say about Vim.